In today's episode, we're going to take a look at how you can prevent expensive water damage to your home caused by burst pipes and water leaks, as well as take a look at sensors and notifications for other types of water intrusion, such as overflowing sump pumps or leaking windows. Let's get started. Water damage is incredibly expensive. In 2022, the average home insurance claim for water damage was over $11,000. Replacing flooring, replacing drywall, trim, paint, it all adds up. On any given day, home water damage emergencies affect 14,000 people. Nationwide, household water damage costs up to $20 billion a year. While these numbers all sound horrible to you and me, there's somebody that's even more terrified by them, the insurance companies. Because of this, many insurance companies have discounts in place for homeowners policies if you have some type of automatic leak detection and or water shutoff system in place, among other things, such as security systems, remote fire alarms, cameras, and many other types of common smart home stuff. While I obviously can't give you exact figures since that'll vary from underwriter to underwriter and policy to policy, what I can tell you is that individually, the discounts aren't very large. You might save 20 or 30 bucks a year per smart home tech discount. However, if you qualify for three or four of the available categories of discount, that could save you $100 or more per year. Add that up and over the course of a few years, many of these things will pay for themselves and then some. Contact your insurance company to discuss what types of protections you have built into your smart house and what discounts might be available to you. Let's take a look at the products I'm going to use to set up my smart home water leak detection and prevention system. First up is the Zeus Titan water valve actuator. This is a Z-Wave device and it's available right now on Amazon for $179.95. Some of you may have seen other lesser expensive competitors products and are wondering why this one is so expensive. Well, if we take a look at some of the competitors products, you'll notice that they only attach to one side of the valve. That limits the amount of torque they can apply to the valve handle before they start twisting themselves. By attaching to the pipe on both sides of the valve, the Titan is able to apply much more torque without damaging anything, and boy oh boy does this thing apply torque. This thing is crazy strong. When I was doing research on this product, I found a video of this thing moving a valve that was so tight that the guy could barely turn it manually. Titan, no problem. You might not think that's a big deal, but during my research, I ran across several people who said they had to have a plumber replace their shutoff valves every few years because they get too stiff for their cheap product to turn anymore. Now, I don't know about your skill level or where you live, but I, I can't do that. And around here, plumbers aren't cheap. Replacing a valve even once would cost more than the Titan. Installation of the Titan is super easy. You don't even need any tools. Just clamp it on the pipe and go. The Titan is rated for outdoor installation as well. It's IP66 rated and can be operated in temperatures ranging from 14 to 122 degrees. For those of you not familiar with IP ratings, I went and looked up the exact requirements to get an IP66 rating. IP66 rated enclosures provide protection against high pressure, one half inch water jets. The test includes the enclosure being subjected to 26.4 gallons per minute of water volume with pressure of just over 14 and a half PSI or 100 kilopascals for my European friends at a distance of three yards for at least three minutes. In addition, it is completely dust tight and protected from high pressure water jets from any direction. IP66 ratings are the highest level of waterproof protection not including total submersion. Now, you might not have any Z-Wave devices. Hell, you might not even have a Z-Wave coordinator. I use the Nortec USB stick and it does both Zigbee and Z-Wave in a single device. I covered that a bunch of videos back and I'll drop a link in the description. But the Nortec stick is pretty inexpensive and the Titan is good enough that you might just decide to add Z-Wave just so that you can use it like I did. And here it is. It comes with a nine foot power cord that's also weather rated and sealed. In addition, in the box, they also include a leak probe that connects to the Titan with a 1 8 inch or three and a half millimeter jack. The Titan works with any ball valves that are between half inch and inch and a quarter. 
A couple very important things to note though, before you just go run off and buy one of these. You need a minimum of three inches of clearance from the center of the valve to each side on the pipe. My install just barely makes this requirement with about three and a quarter inches of clearance. Next up, you need at least an inch and a quarter of clearance between the valve handle and the pipe. Then you're also going to need at least one inch of clearance between the pipe and the wall. The other thing worth noting is that the installation instructions are very specific that you do not power on, test, or do anything else with the Titan before it is fully installed on the pipe. Calibration is required in order for the device to function properly. The next part of my solution is Acara water leak sensors. Zoos does offer water leak sensors, wireless ones too, but they're larger than the Acara ones and at 30 bucks a piece on Amazon, they're considerably more expensive than the Acara ones too. Here's the Acara one. These Acara Zigbee leak sensors can be had on Amazon at a pretty reasonable price. Right now, as I'm recording this video, they're $18.99, but then there's a 15% off coupon, which brings them down to just over 16 bucks US. They're on sale pretty often too though, so if you need a lot of them, maybe wait and catch them on Prime Days. Links to all this stuff is in the description, by the way. If you don't have any of these car devices yet, please, for the love of all things holy, use the correct tool to open the battery compartment. I've seen some ridiculous videos on other channels, <coughs> oh, I'll make guy, of people trying to open these things with screwdrivers and just mangling the plastic case, and then complaining that it was difficult to open. So what's the correct tool? A quarter. I don't know, maybe they don't have quarters in the UK. I'm sure they have some kind of coin that fits in this little slot here. Anyhow, for those of you wondering, can you mix brands and communication protocols like that? The answer is yes. The devices don't talk directly to one another. Instead, they talk to Home Assistant and then Home Assistant handles all the automations for you. Easy peasy. I've already done a video about adding a car devices to Home Assistant, so I'll leave a link to that one in the description below if you need more information about that. Meanwhile, I'm gonna go install this thing on the valve. Unfortunately, I can't record the install since the valve is in a horrible spot in my house. It's behind the water softener. I've got like, yeah, camera's not gonna fit in there, sorry. But I did put a link in the description from Mizzou's YouTube channel that not only shows how to install it on the pipe, but also shows how strong it is. Be sure to check that out. One eternity later. Let's take a look at adding it to Home Assistant. I'm gonna do this on my phone since you've gotta push buttons on the device in order to join it. Navigate to settings, Devices and Services, and on the Integration tab, click Z-Wave. Click Configure next to Z-Wave JS, and then click Add Device. Then tap the Z-Wave button on the Titan three times. The LED will flash quickly and beep to signal that it's communicating. When it's been successfully added, it'll turn green for three seconds. Now that that's added to Home Assistant, let's go work on our automations. I'm gonna modify most of my water leak sensor automations so that if the water sensors get wet, Zeus will shut off the water. Why only most of them? How come I'm not changing all of them? The location of some of my water leak sensors has nothing to do with the burst or leaking pipe. For example, the ones on the basement windowsills on the egress windows or the one monitoring the sump pump pit. If those get wet, it's gonna be because of rainwater or my sump pump failing neither of which is gonna be stopped by turning off the water main. Here's how I configured my automations. My water leak notifications right now are all the same and we cover them in the mobile TTS notification video, but we'll take a quick look again. The trigger is a water leak sensor getting wet. The first action is to send a TTS message to my phone using the send notification service. The message is TTS in all caps and then in the data field, you need to include these four items. TTS text is the message to be spoken and media stream specifies which media stream to use for playback. Since a water leak is kind of a big deal, I'm using Alarmstream Max, which will play back the message at max volume, even if the phone is locked. The next notification is identical, just sends it to my wife's phone instead of mine. Next up is a text notification that contains more detail. 
Again, I call the send notification service, but this time in the message field, I specify which sensor got wet and I set the title to water. Under the data section, I also change the notification icon to be MDI water and set the color to red. Again, the next notification is a duplicate and just sends a notification to my wife's phone. Note that these notifications are for Android and iOS notifications may require a little bit of a different config. For more information about these notifications, check out my mobile notification video. I'll leave a link in the description for you. Now that we've covered the existing integration, let's add the water shutoff. Create a new action, select our new valve, and tell it to turn the water off. Done. Now, one thing that I haven't done yet, but I plan to, and I think you should too, is to turn the water off when the power goes out and the exterior temperature is below a set temp. For me, I think I'm gonna use 50 degrees since when it's 50 during the day, it easily gets down to freezing overnight. Now, I have a UPS in the rack with all my network equipment and the home assistant and everything else, and the Zeus is plugged into that UPS too. On my to-do list is to configure NUT or Network UPS tools. This will tell me when the power goes out. Since the power is out and I have no way of knowing how long the power will be out, there's a chance that my UPS is going to run out of battery power and then I wouldn't be able to operate the Titan. So if I'm out of town on vacation and the power goes out, the furnace doesn't run, the pipes freeze, I'd much rather come home to the water having been off for a week than having a flooded house. We'll cover that configuration when I make a video about NUT. First, I've got to install a battery expansion though to provide more runtime for my UPS. I got quite a bit of stuff connected to it. All right, that's enough for today. I'm already running way behind since I spent most of the morning rewiring a circuit in my garage so that I can install a smart switch without tripping the damn GFCI on that circuit. Talk about a pain in my ass. I've still got a whole bunch more automations that I need to get updated and then I need to go add that valve to my information page. What's an information page? Be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring a little bell so that you don't miss Dashboard December where I'll cover that and a whole lot more. If you enjoyed today's video, please go ahead and give that thumbs up a smack for me so that YouTube puts my pretty thumbnail in front of more eyeballs. The more people that watch my videos, the more motivated I am to make more of them. So help a brother out. All the code for this episode is posted over on my Patreon page for my patrons to download. Stop in, check it out, and if you'd like to help out the channel, sign up. In addition to code from every episode, I also post periodic copies of my automations, configuration, and dashboard YAML files, and patrons have access to all sorts of exclusive benefits, such as early access to ad-free videos, free t-shirts, exclusive giveaways, access to the FHT Discord, and much, much more. Benefits are available beginning at just three bucks US per month. I'll leave a link in the description in case you're interested. I'd like to take just a moment and say thank you to my current patrons. You guys kick ass. Thank you so much for your support. I hope you found today's video informative and entertaining, and I hope that I was able to teach you something new. I hope you liked today's t-shirt, and I look forward to seeing all your smiling faces in the next episode. Thanks for watching, and until next time, go automate something, will ya?